Hello, hi, social challenge week. I am Ardian Fuga Kurtoli. I'm an entrepreneur, a marketeer, an artist and a rapper. Obviously, I have a lot of experience in different industries and you can view more about me at, in my website, that is fuga.com. And feel free to write me there, to network with me, so you can give me also your two cents about the topic that we will be discussing here today. I currently work for uh, Air Pristina as a marketing manager. And uh, Air Pristina is an air charter company and we give uh, services, uh, cheap flights and high quality flights to the Albanian diaspora all across Europe. Uh, coming to Kosovo and Macedonia to the main uh, points for the Albanian community. And uh, managing the social channels and the Albanian community in general, I saw something very strange. For example, the Albanian community is in the transition of uh, digitalizing and they are also a little bit traditional where it when it comes to new uh, technological innovations and stuff like that. So uh, for a community like this, first we need to measure and to build trust around that community and then to understand the community so by understanding them we can act. So today I've gotten my Batman notebook and when I take out my Batman notebook that means that it's really something important inside and I'm going to share my theory with you and we're going to talk about something different. So today I will be challenging you in how do you view your social media channels? How do you view your customers? And how do you view your digital marketing in general? So I'm gonna set the play field for this. So I'll need you to do a little bit of some assumptions. So don't consider your social uh, media channel, first of all, as a social media channel for your brand. Forget about that. Please, from now on, when we discuss today, consider your social media channel as a standalone company, okay? Obviously, you have your budget that you get from your company, but now consider that as a standalone budget for your company. You have the capital that are the people that work there, the tools that you have, for example, different platforms, different tools that make your job easier as a social media manager. So, you kind of have some predispositions to be a normal company. Why am I saying that? Because I want to get out into a different point of view. Now, you as a social media manager, consider yourself here as a CEO of this company, okay? And now you have your associates and the people that help you, which are the board of directors and the managers of this company. And now, things start to get interesting in this theory. The customers, the fans that you have, consider them as your workers, okay? As the workers of this company, why? Because obviously when we do content and when we publish on social media, we want that content to be engaging. And we want people to click, we want people to share, we want people to discuss about that content. And even that slightest action from people it's considered work in my opinion, okay? It takes work for a, peop for a guy, you know, to move the mouse and to click. It's something very small, but yeah, it takes work. It's work. Or to write a comment and feedback, give you feedback about something. Yeah, it's work. So from now on, I'm gonna talk about customers as workers. And when I say workers, always have in mind your customer and your people that are your fan base. And why am I saying this? Because I want you to put the whole social media management that you do in a different perspective, in an HR perspective, okay? In a management perspective, in a, in a, in a financial, economical perspective. Why? Because let's say the basic thing that drives our page is what? Is engagement? Yeah. Because we want people to engage, we want people to click, we want people to share, we want people to comment. So now consulting with a lot of PhDs, my professors and people with uh, economical and financial expertise, 
and that people that don't have a lot of experience in the new digital world, when I ask them, how do you understand engagement? Uh, they say that engagement is commitment. Okay? And this led me to develop this theory. And I say to myself, okay, I don't want engaged fans. I want committed workers. I want my fans to be committed and I want my fans to work together with me to develop my brand, to develop this company that I have online. So how do we do this? First of all, we start with alignment, okay? First, we need to align our workers with the values and the goals of our brand, okay? So we need to post everything in our social media challenge with a flavor, with a pinch of our brand. And you might say, for example, it's hard to publish and to make a lot of content like this, but I'll challenge you in the opposite because you don't need to create. The problem is, I mean, and the solution nowadays because people think that they need to create a lot of content, but it's the opposite. Don't think about it as creating content. Think about it as documenting. Okay, so you need to document content. Everything can be documented. You don't need to think a lot when you create a piece of content. You can go outside your HQ, document, take a picture of the building, and then make that post, create it with some copy, and make it engaging. For example, you can ask, uh, do you like the flowers that we planted outside the HQ? Do you like this and that? So that means when you document stuff like this, you can be more persistent and you can uh, raise the volume of the content that you produce by documenting. So by documenting, then your fans will understand your brand values, you'll understand your brand goals, and they will understand your brand in total. That means that they will know how your brand speaks, what are the colors, how do you write, how do you interact, and etc., etc. So this means aligning your workers, that is your fans, with your brand. The next step is contribution, okay? This is the most serious one because here you expect your workers to contribute in this company. So you expect your fans to contribute in this channel that you manage. And how do you achieve that? You achieve that when you put yourself in a coaching position. Now, don't mix the words, let's say, trainer or mentor or something. I'm asking you to coach people. And from the coach perspective, you need to ask people, okay? If you want to coach, you need to ask people. Let's say a basketball coach, you know, ask the player, have you eaten today? Did you do the push-ups? Did you do the sit-ups? Uh, what was, you know, did you do this and that? So then the coach gets the feedback from the player and then he implements that and leaves the player to do all of the work himself and then he gives the appreciation for that work or for something. And generally, talking financially from the economical point of view, in all of the companies it's proven that 20% do the revenue and the work of the 80%, but that doesn't mean that the 80% don't work, but it's just a lower class. And that means that you also have to be in this coaching position, you and your managers, you the CEO of this company, and your managers, to curate this content, document this content, and just to make them work for you. And then the 80% that is your workers, your fan base, they will start working. So. When they start contributing, you can do this contribution from different aspects. You can ask them questions on your post. You can do uh, different campaigns. Let's say post content with this hashtag, have branded hashtags and make them post content for you. So now you're getting content, but uh, what happens then? Then we come to the third part of this circle. Then we come to the appreciation part that is very important because when they align with you, when they contribute for you, as a worker, you want appreciation, okay? You're on your job, you align with the company that you work, you contribute, you work for that company, and then what? You want your salary, you want your bonus, you want your everything. So also your fans would like appreciation for the work they did. And here you come with the different types of content. You can do, let's say, 
prize games, okay? You can give them different types of prizes and you can do like gamification methods on this and you can choose, let's say, the fan of the week, the fan of the month, and you can do a lot of types of uh, appreciation and give them a lot of benefits and a lot of rewards towards their contribution that they did. And you can take this even into a personal level. For example, you can like personally thank everyone that gave you a share. Or if someone gives you a good comment and you know that that's a good comment and helping someone, uh, you can go and interact as a third party on that comment, on that uh, conversation, and then thank the both parties they are doing. So you have to be thankful. And that's, that, that is that human touch that we are bringing into digital, because being a nice person is about being grateful and being thankful. And as a brand, you have to be the same thing online. So after we have this, we have the last part of the circle that is commitment. Okay, so now we have commitment. Now the whole circle has closed with the alignment, with the contribution, with the appreciation, and now we have commitment. And on this part, we have fans and we have workers that are willing to go above and beyond for your brand. Because by this point, if someone says something negative, for example, for you, and your brand in your social channels, you will have workers there intervening and doing, let's say, customer service for you. Because you have committed people, you have a committed fan base, they will go and say and comment on that dude and say, no, this is that, because we as a fan base, as fans, and this, that, or they will give you, you know, they will work for you and they give you positive feedback on the issue and they will do customer service for you, they will generate content and everything. But the point is that this whole circle it's an all spinning wheel you cannot stop it okay so you need to spin it and spin it and spin it and spin it spin it with the new users with the new people every one of these people can become your friend your fan and your worker so it's a wheel that needs to be spin 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 all of the time and now let's say in 2018 i have some predictions that we will have a lot of uh, more in-depth analytics, a lot of more in-depth in inside insights and we will have uh, personalization and the content that we will produce will be more personalized and also machine learning is being developed more and more and we have these kind of uh, innovations coming so it's a market and it's a community where we can actually uh, test and try this kind of stuff. It's something in the theory, it's something that I've been developing and it is going, but as I said, it's a circle that needs to be ongoing. And it's just, in my perspective, it's adding that human touch to the whole digital world that we manage because in the long run, we all want to have committed workers, that is fans and people that contribute for us and our brand. So uh, it's something that I'm developing. It's something that I want to challenge you to see this social media from this perspective. And I want feedback from you and to sense on everything that you think from this. So I will go on a coffee right now, grab a coffee, grab something to drink, and I will be on Twitter and there we can extend our conversation via the official hashtag of the social challenge week and you can ask me everything so see you there and thank you for listening cheers <laughs>